guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for the new trailer. They just dropped it. Super excited. This trailer has got me so hyped up for the new episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. And obviously, this is Supergirl's final season, so it is bittersweet. David Harewood actually put out a tweet yesterday saying that this is the last time that he's suiting up as Martian Manhunter. So they're coming into their final week or so of filming and they're going to be officially done. It's very bit sweet because, you know, I've been here since episode one. I'm sure many of you guys have and I haven't missed a single episode. I'm going to miss it so much, but I'm hoping we're going to get like a Supergirl spin-off after the show ends. Maybe with Nia and some of the other characters. But for now... Let's go ahead, get excited for the final episodes of Supergirl, and let's break down this trailer. So I believe this is for mainly episode 8, but there might be some footage from like 9 and 10 as well, because, you know, they've shot most of the season, and Supergirl this season is going to be 20 episodes, so we still have 13 more to go. So the first shot of the trailer is this. So of Kara and Alex, the Danvers sisters, and there is various angles of this one scene that they have together. And so you can see here, this is them, they're like watching something on the computer, they got takeaway, classic Danvers sisters couch scene, love those so much, and I've missed those obviously, like the first seven episodes of the season, Melissa wasn't really there until the ending, but it was great that they could include Melissa in the story, even though she wasn't with Team Supergirl, she was still on screen. But as a reminder for you guys, because it's been quite a while since Supergirl episode 7 of season 6 aired, at the end, Supergirl came back and she hugged Valix and that is where we left off the episode and so we we're picking up from there basically. And so Kara is still very distraught and she is full of fear from the Phantom Zone and so she describes how the Phantom Zone was. She says it was so cold in the Phantom Zone, every breath felt like ice. And then Alex says we'll get through this together in this shot and then she goes on in the close up and says what if that fear never goes away. And so that is obviously her and her sort of fears with inside of herself and she is revealing it to Alex. And I feel like this is going to be a great Danvers sisters scene because, I mean, we've missed them. And this is going to be Alex comforting Kara who is very distraught after what she's been through in the Phantom Zone because it is very distressing. And, I mean, you would be full of fear if you did it yourself. And so, yeah, let's move on from that. And we get a first look at one of the villains of the week, I would presume. I don't think he's like a season long villain. This guy is definitely a big hitter. He is a literal like Ninja Turtle times 100. I don't know how to describe him, but basically he's like full of rocks and it seems like he's just come out of the sea. Maybe he was born in the sea and he was caused by some sort of maybe reaction. I know uh, quite a bit to do with the back half of the season, at least this storyline is going to be to do with climate change, so maybe it's a literal embodiment of what humans have done to the sea, and this is the environment coming back to bite them in the ass. and I think it's a pretty cool storyline to go down, and I'm actually excited for it because it's something I feel quite strongly about, and I think a lot of you guys feel strongly about, and the showrunners definitely feel strongly about, and I think this could be the one time that they hit it right on the nose because sometimes with Supergirl's big themes they do kind of miss the mark especially like you remember the Agent Liberty one where it just kind of became a caricature in the end I feel like this is gonna hit I've got a sneaking feeling but let's move on to the next shot we have Kara and she is talking to Brainy and here Brainy says this line I'll be beside you every step of the way and then we cut to Kara's reaction and she smiles because you know this is one of the first times that they've probably been back together and so it's nice to see the two characters properly interact and it seems like this is just Brainy pledging his allegiance for like the rest of the season basically being like I'm gonna do whatever it takes I'm gonna have your back and we're going to stop whatever the next threat that comes at us is. And this is probably in the midst of fighting that new threat that we just saw a couple of shots back in the trailer. But the CGI looks really, really good for this episode. I don't know if they like save their budget up, but it looks something like out of Superman Lois. So I'm really impressed. Look at this shot right here. We have this is a satellite and it's coming out of the sea it looks like and it's being propelled up into the sky by Supergirl and Martian Manhunter it looks like. 
and I just wanted to point out that I think the CGI looks really good here. So let's move on and this is where they start talking a bit about climate change. So Kara's dad says, your oceans are dying. This is what destroyed Krypton and we have to stop it. And so he is talking to Kara. You can see Kara right here. They're inside the tower and it seems that, you know, this monster that is going around is a definite sign of the problems that Earth has caused its environment and the oceans. And so it looks like Zorel is confirming Oh yes, this is what happened to Krypton, like, that makes complete sense because that is what we've been told in the comics and in all the different iterations of Krypton, that the planet became nearly uninhabitable and it basically blew up from the inside because of what the Kryptonians did to their own planet. And so he sees a gap here where they could save Earth before it's too late. And I think it's really good that he brings up Krypton because it's entirely true. Okay, so let's move on to the next shot. We have the shot of the giant sort of Ninja Turtle looking dude and he is attacking this place off the shore. Seems he's able to shoot some sort of like fireballs from his fists and so he's very overpowered. And then in someone's apartment, I think this could be Alex's apartment, we have Nixley who shows up and she uses her magic. So it's been teased that Nixley is going to be like a villain this season and then Kara says Nixley in the next shot because you get to see her returning for the first time and them two reuniting and then she says miss me in reply to Kara and you see the shot right here with Nixley and it looks like her makeup is a bit darker definitely a signifier that she is going dark however the next couple of shots with Jean actually signify that maybe she isn't so bad but at the same time maybe she is tricking Jean because that is what fifth dimensional imps are known for they're known for their tricks I mean that's literally what Mr. Mixie Spiddleck is all about also we're seeing Mixie back in the next couple of episodes like after Supergirl returns so be on the lookout for that. So Nixley's going to be hanging around at least for like four episodes or so. I don't know the exact number. But Jean says to Nixley, don't worry, you're safe now. And then in reply to him, she says, no one is safe. And so maybe she is the main cause for this creature in the sea. Could that be it? Or is she just doing a sort of act where she's like, no one is safe. Like, you need to let me help you or something. And maybe that's what's going on. However, I think her being a trickster, she's probably trying to trick Jean in this moment. Okay, so we have Supergirl in the Power Ranger type suit, and we have Jean, and they are being pulled in towards what looks like the massive creature, and it seems like some sort of magnetism maybe, because Supergirl is like flying upside down here, and then they get bonked away by like a beam, and so it doesn't look like Supergirl is going to be like of much help taking down this thing, I don't know how they're gonna do it in the end. Maybe they do need Nixley's help. So then we move on, we've got Kara inside that suit and it looks like her suit is malfunctioning and she's on the floor because she's been slammed down by the creature. And it seems that Jean is okay, although it seems Supergirl is definitely very affected by what is happening to her. Okay, so let's move on. Now this is where we see Alex and she's talking to Kelly and she says, it's only when we take risks that we can find out who we are meant to be. And now what is that in relation to? Well, we cut to the next shot and we see Kelly's helmet. And that is because, you know, when she is going to go out, she's going to take risks and she's going to realize that she is meant to be a superhero. She's meant to be the Golden Guardian or whatever they call her, if they call her Guardian or not. She's going to be a superhero and we know she's suiting up in like a golden version of James's Guardian suit, so very excited for that, and it's a great tease in the trailer. So let's move on to the next shot. We've got the return of Kara, and this is a continuation. I believe this was a shot that they cut out of the last episode, and they're going to include it at the start of episode eight. So it's Kara reuniting with Lena. Great to see them reunite. Then we have a mystery new character. I don't know who he is, but it seems like he is going to be in like maybe one episode or so, and he's got powers. I don't know if he is somehow related to the creature in the episode. Maybe it's him like personify but literally and he turns into a massive creature but he's also in later shots so I feel like Team Supergirl is going to get around to him. I don't know, I could be completely wrong on that but anyway his blast sends Jean and Kara flying as they get hit. And so as we head towards the end of the trailer, we got the return of Nia's mum and Nia's mum says this, the times ahead will be most trying, but you can face them. 
and so we knew that Nia's mom was going to return, so it's not much of a shock, but it looks like this is going to be a very emotional scene, and I'm looking forward to this, because Nia is one of my favorite characters right now on the show, and so we get a reaction shot, and you see Nia crying, and it looks like Nicole is doing a great job here. And just as a reminder, Tuesday, August 24th, is when Supergirl comes back for episode 8. We're going to be doing reviews straight away after the episode airs, so be on the lookout for that as normal. Obviously, you've got Stargirl playing at the same time, so my Stargirl reviews will come out like the day after I review Supergirl. Obviously, Supergirl is the main priority, but you see the satellite in the shot actually getting flung up into the air. And it seems that this is definitely because of Kara, who is like flinging it up, or maybe Jean. And then we have Supergirl, who is going flying through some glass, and it seems like this is Melissa's stunt double who's done that. That is Jennifer. And I don't know where exactly that is, but it kind of looks like the DEO, but I don't think we're going to see the DEO again, because I think they've thrown away that set already. But the final season continues, this is where it teases in the next shot, but you get to see the oceans and like the kind of rubbish island on fire, and it kind of just shows how big of a problem it is. And so then we move on to one of the final shots, we got Kara, and Kara is in the same room, I think in the tower, as Jean. And she is stricken with panic over what is happening because there is a cryonuclear bomb is what Brainy says. So she's going to be trying her best to stop that bomb. And she says, I have to stop that bomb. And Jean is a worry, but she's like, if that bomb goes off, it's still going to destroy everything. So I need to stop it. And so this is where it cuts to the final shot of the trailer, where we see Nia actually putting up a force field around the hurt Supergirl. And also Jean is on the ground after they've tried to attack the massive creature and so Nia is definitely the most powerful person here because she is able to block whatever ray or like beam of energy is coming out of this creature and again I have to emphasize I don't know if this is a creature from the comics it could be let me know if you have any theories in the comments down below but as of right now I just keep on calling it a creature because I don't know who it is but nevertheless, this trailer gets me hyped up for the final episodes of Supergirl, so let me know what you think about all this, leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any Supergirl videos, obviously we're going to make Supergirl videos as much as possible because it's what we love to cover around here along with The Flash and Superman and Lois and stuff, so yeah, that about does it, click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, but for now, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.